I, I'm also curious to get your thoughts, um, you know, both as a, as a member of Congress and, and, and you know, a, a, a well-regarded and competent one, um, but also as, as an openly gay man and the co-founder uh, and uh, co-chair of, or the chair of the Congressional Equality Caucus of the, uh, uh, the Supreme Court ruling that, uh, it, I, I mean, you know, back in, back in, in 1964, or 65, I guess it was, when uh, uh, in South Carolina, um, uh, the, you know, they, were, they were sued by uh, black people who wanted to sit at a lunch counter. And the state's response, which the Supreme Court struck down, um, the state's response was, there's no harm to these people um, because there are other lunch counters that are happy to serve them. Of course, they were blacks-only lunch, lunch counters. And that's essentially what the Supreme Court just said about the queer community in the United States, that, you know, if, if uh, businesses that are open to the public choose not to serve gays, lesbians, trans people, then uh, they can go someplace else. They can, you know, I, I, are we back to Stonewall days? I mean, what the hell is going on here? I'm curious your thoughts on this. And, and we've already got one state attorney general in Arizona saying, I'm not even going to enforce this damn thing, which, by the way, is what Abraham Lincoln said about Dred Scott, that decision in the Supreme Court. He refused to enforce it. And it's what, it's what uh, Andrew Jackson said about two different Supreme Court decisions, the Second National Bank uh, decision and the Cherokee Trail of Tears ca decision. In both cases, he said, to hell with the Supreme Court. I'm not going to enforce their decisions. Where do we go with this? Yeah, well, for one, I mean, this is what happened when you stack a Supreme Court with conservative ideologues who also apparently love to get free gifts from billionaires, we're finding out. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, the Supreme Court's kind of at a low point right now, right, and on many fronts. But on this particular front, you know, even the case that was brought is is a fake case because the person who filed it had just filed it based on, you know, their beliefs. And then the next day claim that they had a request for someone to build a website. Well, it turns out that's not true. It's it, the name that supposedly submitted that is a person in California who's married to a woman who happened to be, a, I think, a Hillary Clinton supporter at the time, but had nothing to do with actually asking for a website for a gay couple. So the whole foundation of their decision is bad. And yet you're right. Uh, it's taking us back to saying discrimination is OK. But, you know, if you read it closely, Tom, and this part hasn't got as much attention, it didn't just say for the LGBTQ plus community. Uh, it basically is leaving a door open for discrimination to others as well by those who do creative work. So I think this is going to be a case that we're going to be talking about for a while. But, you know, this is the same thing we saw in appropriations. Most of the debate we've had so far hasn't been you know, they've cut the, the amounts so deep down to 22 levels, but all the stuff they're amending it is you can't fly a pride flag over the Department of Agriculture building or any embassy. These are all individual amendments uh, wow. that you can't discriminate as a federal government against someone because if they believe marriage is between a man and a woman. So the example I gave is if, if you know, and you've met my husband, Phil, if for some reason I would pass away and the benefits counselor at the legislative uh, affairs uh, for the House uh, decides that they didn't respect our marriage between my husband and I, they could not offer benefits and there'd be no punishment to that person. And they even the, the chair of the committee, I watched nod her head that it would be wrong to do that. And yet they went ahead. And that is what we put into the bill for the ledge branch um, and every other appropriations bill. So this culture war, so to speak, uh, is coming back with a vengeance. And uh, this decision certainly isn't going to help. Yeah. Yeah, it's this is this is uh, nuts. <laughs> I, I, I know I say that way too often, but uh, I don't. I'm lacking other words.